Hello everyone! For this particular lecture video, we'll be talking about electronic structure and periodicity part 1. For the lesson objectives, we have the following. Number 1, identify the basic parts of the periodic table of elements. Second is, relate the number of valence electrons to the group number of an element in the periodic table. For the lesson topic, we only have one, that is simply the parts of the modern periodic table of elements and as well as the relationship of the valence electrons with that of the group number of your elements. So more on that on the next slides. Okay, so let's start. The modern periodic table, we can simply um, put it saying that the periodic table has 118 existing elements and then 92 out of 118 are naturally occurring, whereas the remaining or the others are synthesized in the laboratory. Okay, so we need to say there are 92 naturally occurring in the environment, whereas the remaining with that of the 118 are simply man-made, simply um, synthesized or developed in the laboratory. For the parts of the periodic table, we have actually two main parts, that is your horizontal row, that represents the period or series of your periodic table, and then the, col the column, which represents the groups or families, meaning to say, okay, so the periods, this represents the horizontal row. So yung po yung yan po, yung horizontal na yan o yung naka-row, yan po ay tinatawag nating period o series. Habang yung naka-column naman po, ang tawag naman po natin sa kanila ay group or family. So tandaan, horizontal, is period or series, and then your column are your groups or families. Okay? Okay. Now, this is your period. Okay, so you have your period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, period or series, they are the same. So, remember, your period is the one that we have as the horizontal. And then, the columnar part, okay, the columnar part represents the families or the groups of the respective elements okay like this one so elements found here at the second row they have the second period or period number two and then for those elements found here at the sixth row they said to have the sixth period or the period number six okay so that's the example say for example we have this periodic table okay let me just zoom it. So, you have here a periodic table. So, meaning to say, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and even neon, they are found here at the second column. Okay? So, that's the idea. Whereas, you have here your rubidium, strontium, up until here, xenon, iodine, tellurium, antimony, pn, and indium, they are on the period number 5. Say, for example, your instructor asks you, where is or what is the period of germanium? So germanium is this one, element 32, GE. So we can say that germanium has the period number 4 or fourth period. And let's say, for example, you were asked to find or determine the period of phosphorus. Phosphorus is this one, 15th element. Now you can say or answer that phosphorus has period number 3 or is found on your period number 3 in the periodic table. Okay? So that's the idea for that one. Now for the groups, you have here the groups being the columnar, the columnar um, representation. Say for example here, your columns here. So the first column, this is a group number 1. The second column is a group number 2. And then the block here that you have here, from scandium, amatil zinc, yttrium, this one. This particular elements here in the transition metals, we call them transition metals. This one the highlighted in um, with this color. And then this one, the boron group. Okay. Boron group or group number three, because this is the, thir the third column. Then fourth column or the fourth group, group number four, carbons group. Then group number five, nitrogens group. And then group 6, oxygens, and then fluorines. And then this is the 8th group, group number 8, or the noble gases. Okay? For some, for some periodic table, the arrangement was 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. 
But for those of classical um, periodic table, we have group number one, first row, group number two, second row, and then you have your transition metals, and then third um, column rather, this is group number three, group number four, nitrogen up until uh, bismuth, you have here your, or uh, up until muscogodium, you have here your group, your nitrogen group, and then oxygen group, group number six, so on and so forth. Fluorine is group seven. And then you have your um, your noble gases, okay? Noble gases, and then so on and so forth, okay? So again, your column represents the group, okay? Now, okay. Now you have here the groups in particular. Same groups have similar properties. That's the idea for having a group in the periodic table. They show you the um, similar properties of the uh, elements within the family or the group. So say for example, you have here um, for this particular uh, group. So group 1A, you have here alkali metals, this particular column. And then the second column, or group 2 or group 2A, your alkaline earth metals. And then the middle part, this is your transition metals. Then proceeding with boron group, this one, the third uh, column, group 3. And then group 4, carbon group group 5 nitrogen group and then oxygen's group or the calcogen group 6 and then group 7 halogens or the fluorine group and then your group 8 or the noble gases okay so that's the idea or the names for their group or families all right next one is talking about the valence electrons and its relationship with the group numbers okay so say for example um you need to determine uh, the valence electron of a specific element there is actually a shortcut for you to determine it okay but first let us define what a valence electron is so we define valen valence electrons as electrons in the outermost shell of an atom meaning to say say for example this is theoretical element x and it has um say for example three shells okay so in the first shell or the first um, level it has two electrons the second level it has two electrons and then in the last or the outermost shell it has um, six electrons okay so since valence electrons is defined as electrons in the outer shell so meaning to say the outer shell is this one meaning to say the electrons found here at the outermost shell particularly six electrons this will be your valence electrons Okay, let me repeat. Valence electrons, they are defined as electrons in the outermost shell of an atom. So for this particular theoretical element, it has three shells. So you have here this shell, second shell, and then the third or the outermost shell. So the electrons found at the outermost, they are termed to be or called as valence electron. Okay? Now what about the shortcut? Now, kung ano po yung group number o kung ano po yung kinabibilangan na group number or family ng element na iyon, yun din po ang magiging valence electron niya. Okay? So, what does that mean? So, you have your uh, example. Okay? Say, for example, you need to determine the valence electron for lithium. Now, since lithium is in group number 1, we can therefore conclude that lithium has one valence electron. And then say, for example, ano, you are asked to determine the valence electron for fluorine. So the valence electron for fluorine will be 7. Why? Because fluorine is in group number 7. How? Papaano? This is group 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then group 7 where fluorine belongs to. Okay, so that's basically the idea on how we can relate valence electron with group numbers okay because group number corresponds to the number of valence electron so example you have your magnesium so this is another way we can um represent or determine the what you call this one the valence electron of a element so magnesium has actually 12 electrons in um information okay or in basic information the electron configuration okay the electron configuration of uh, Magnesium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s2. So since valence electrons 
are defined as the electrons found in the outermost shell in your electron configuration okay one represents or the numerical coefficients such as one okay such as one here two and three they represent okay they represent the um the energy levels or the energy levels sorry about that the energy levels or shells of your atom so with this magnesium we have one and we have two and we have three so meaning to say three is the outermost shell and then your exponents okay they represent your electrons so therefore since 3s2 number 3 is the outermost shell the exponent 2 represents the valence electron of your magnesium so therefore for magnesium we have two valence electrons okay another example okay say for example you need to determine the valence electron of phosphorus using the using the electron configuration of the same element so phosphorus the electron configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 and then 3s2 3p3 so for this particular element we have first level the second level and then the third level or the third shell so 3s2 and 3p6 is your outermost shell okay outermost shell because it has it is the outermost or the last layer seemingly the last layer and now look at the um, exponents again the exponents represents the electrons so 2 plus 3 we can therefore conclude that phosphorus have five valence electron okay that's it how do we check if we are correct so again we define this one so let me write this one um this is for magnesium magnesium has two valence electron and phosphorus has five valence electron let us check okay so let us check with this one let us look for magnesium magnesium is this one mg what is the group number group number two and this is your also this is also your valence electron two so again your valence electron is also equal to the group number how about phosphorus okay let me look, look for phosphorus phosphorus is this one okay so let us count for the group number okay so counting for the group number this is group one this is group two i mean group one group two and then group three group four group five phosphorus belongs to group number five and now look at our valence electron a while ago that is also five okay so again the valence electrons are the same or can be identified with that of the group number so whatever the group number is that is also the valence electrons now what about sir the transition metals now the transition metals are quite tricky because transition metals as we learn from our lesson in atoms molecules and ions remember um, metals with variable charges remember most of your metals here at the transition metals contain variable charges when we say variable charges they contain one they contain two or more cationic charges so because of that reason transition metals have you know varied um varied charges and determining <clears throat> sorry about that determining their valence electrons would be challenging and difficult okay okay let me continue now again your modern periodic table of elements now this will be a guide for you on how we determine the number of valence electrons so always remember for group number one they have one valence electron for group number two they have two yeah for group number three they have three valence electrons and then so on and so forth okay okay now this is another representation of your periodic table okay so this is group one now since this is group one we can say that 
all the elements found in group number 1 have one valence electrons. Okay? Alkali group, group number 1. We can therefore say that all of the elements found in group number 1 or the alkali group has one valence electron. Group number 7. All of the elements found in the 7th column or group number 7 has 7 valence electron in their shell. Okay, 7 electrons in the valence shell for group number 7 because they are number 7 group. And then the alkali group, this is a group number 1, they have 1 electron in the valence shell. Okay, so it's that easy. Now let's move on with this one. Now what about this one, the SPDF block element? So let me explain this. S block. Now let me just first define them. The S block elements have valence electrons that occupy the S orbital. Now the S block is composed of your group 1 and group 2. P block. The P block elements have valence electrons that occupy the P orbital. The P block contains groups 3 up until group 8. D block. The D block metals have D orbitals partially or fully occupied by electrons. Now, your D block is composed of your transition metals. Okay? And then the F block, the elements in this block have electrons in their F orbital. Now, most of your F block is composed of the lanthanide and actinide elements. Okay? So, again, S block, this is made up of your group 1 and 2, first and second column. The P block is made up of the group 3 up until group 8. The D block is made up of the transition metals, the middle part of the periodic table. And then the F block, they contain, this block contains the lanthanide and actinide series or elements. Let me show you this particular bit. So this is the SPDF block. Okay? So you have here your, what do you call this one? Numbers 1 to 7, you have here your periods. Okay? The row, the row part. Okay? So this is the S block. The colored yellow, they represent the S block. So the S block is made up of the first column and the second column, group 1 and 2. The S block also has your helium. So including helium, this one, so hydrogen and helium, including helium, they are part of the S block. Okay, this is the P block. The P block represents the orange part, the colored orange. Groups number 3 up until group 8, they are under the P block. Okay? And then you have here the D block, the colored green. They represent the transition metals. So the D block is made up of transition metals. And then last but not the least, you have your F block. The F block is this part of the periodic table, your lanthanide. This one on the upper part, and then the actinide, the lower part, series. So, lanthanide, first row, and then actinide, second row. Okay? So, what does the N-1 here for D and the N-2 of F represent? Okay? So, say for example, you need to determine the period of the elements found here. Okay? So, alamin daw po kung ano daw, yung, yung, ano daw po yung period number ng mga elements na nakikita dito hanggang dito sa kanan na ito. Ang ibig sabihin ng n-1, itong n po, ito po yung number 4. So, originally, alam mo, dapat number 4 yan lahat. Pero kung ang elemento po na yan ay natapat dito sa D block, so instead of 4, magiging 3. Okay? Bigyan ko po kayo ng example. Okay? So, 1s, 2s. So, yan po yung pag, ano yan, pag, pag, paglalagay. Kasi S block sila, so 1S. Then, ito naman ay 2S, ito 3S, 4S. And then, for the P block, you have that one and this bit. Okay? So, look at this one. So, supposedly, yung mga elements po na nakalagay dito sa D block ay dapat 4 ang period. Pero nga dahil nakapwesto sila sa D block, N minus 1. So, instead of 4D, magiging 3D. As ito naman, yung nasa baba nila, yung mga elements na nandito, yan, yung, nilalag, yung pinapakita ng cursor ko, or sa nag-hover yung cursor ko, sila po ngayon ay 4D. Bakit? Dahil, I mean, not necessarily 4D sila, but, not, but rather, their period, instead of being 5, dahil ito, yan, no, yung, yung nasa S block, at 
P-block, 5 ang kanilang period. Pero bakit yung mga kasama, yung kahalang or kahilera ni S-block at P-block ay naka-4 ang period? Dahil nga N-1. Same thing with your F-block. N-2 naman. Kasi itong lantanid series, itong nasa unang uh, row na ito, dito sila nakatapat kay number 6. Kung ano man element ang natapat dyan, dapat 6 yan. Pero dahil nga minus 2, 6 minus 2, magiging 4F. Okay? Let me give you an example. Okay, so we have here. Okay, so say for example, pinapahanap ano ang period ni beryllium. Si beryllium ay ito. Okay, beryllium ito. So let me just zoom that one. Beryllium is this one, BE. Saan nakalagay si beryllium? Anong block? Ito siya. Okay? So, nasa S block. First and second column. So, dahil S block siya, ano ang period? 2. So, dahil 2 ang kanyang period at nasa S block siya, meron siyang orbital na 2S. Okay? How about scandium? Ito si scandium. 28, 21st element. Si scandium ay nasaan? Nasa D block. Nandito siya, oh. Yan. Kung saan nag-hover yung, ano ko ngayon, yung pointer. So, dahil nasa D block siya, okay, supposedly, ang kanyang period ay itong 4. Pero bakit hindi 4? Bakit dito nakalagay na 3? Bakit may orbital siyang 3D? Kasi nga po, dahil nasa D block si scandium, yung kanyang period number ay magma-minus 1 ka automatically. So again, ito po, si scandium, si titanium, si vanadium, chromium, manganese, supposedly, 4 ang kanilang period. Ayan o, no, 4, nakatapat. Kaso nga, nasa bloke siya ng D. So 4 minus 1, magiging 3. Paano naman si niobium? Ito, NB. So dapat, ang period niya ay 5. Kaso nga, nasa D-block siya. Ayan o, no, nasa D-block, tulad nito. So, 5 minus 1, magiging 4 ang kanyang period. So, paano naman ito? Let me just um, remove that one. Let me just reset this one. Yeah. So, how about your, um, this particular element? So, say for example, what about the period of SM or Samarium? This one, 62. 62nd element, the one that I'm hi highlighting right now. Okay? Ayan, this one, 62. Samarium. Supposedly, ang kanyang period ay number 6. Pero, according sa ating SPDF block, dahil si Samarium ay nasa F block, N minus 2. So, dapat 6 minus 2 magiging 4F ang kanyang orbital or nasa meron siyang orbital na 4F. O, papaano naman si uranium? Uranium, our 92nd element. Again, alamin daw kung ano daw yung period ni uranium. Ano daw ang period number niya? Yung row, row number. So, nakalagay din sa periodic table 7. Nakalagay din dito 7. Kaso nga, si uranium ay nasa F block N minus 2 So, yung N mo ay 7, ayan, minus 2, magiging 5. So, si uranium ay mayroong period 5 instead of 7. Bakit ulit naging 5? Dahil nga, N minus 2 for F block. Okay? So, huwag kalimutan for D and then for F. So, for D, you have N minus 1 for their period number. And then for F block elements, you have N minus 2. Okay? Okay. All right. That actually ends my short lecture video about electronic structure and periodicity part one. I hope you learned a thing or two about this particular topic. Thank you and have a great day.